Spray Tips with Tom Wolf is brought to you by Loveland Products and All Clear, the premium spray tank cleaner. Don't let spray tank residue lose you. The results are all clear. Hello there and welcome to Spray Tips with Tom. I'm Tom Wolf and we're going to cover something called spray quality today. Uh, spray quality is one of the most common terms in the spraying business. It refers to uh, the droplet size produced by nozzles and sometimes also called uh, uh, spray uh, categorization or droplet size categorization and those kinds of terms and they all really mean the same thing. It's a way of describing generically how big or small the droplets in the spray are. And I'm going to just show you how it's done and what it means and how to interpret the data that are produced by nozzle manufacturers. So first of all, uh, in order to determine the spray quality of an agricultural spray, we have to measure it and we do that using laser instruments. And when we do that, we basically spray uh, an agricultural spray into a chamber and a laser light shines through it. Different types are available and they give you very interesting information about those droplets. Uh, the first thing we find is that, uh, for example, if we look at the droplet diameter here on the x-axis, say from 0 to 1,000 microns, and I think 1,000 uh, microns is a millimeter, um, we see a distribution like this. If we look at the number of droplets that's coming uh, out of that, that nozzle, it almost always looks like this. It, uh, th there's a very sharp peak of many droplets near the, near the uh, y-axis here and then tapering off with very few larger droplets. This is true of every nozzle, be it a hollow cone, a flat fan, an air induction tip, a pre-orifice tip, it really doesn't matter, they all look the same. The only thing that changes really is the, the, the actual number near the top here. Obviously with coarser sprays, the overall number of drops is smaller. Uh, and for finer sprays, the opposite. But the, the relative shape of the, sh of the curve is always the same. Um, the, the second curve we get is that of volume. So we can take the number distribution and convert it to volume by multiplying it by that formula. And we get a curve that looks a little bit more like this. So it's shifted quite a bit to the right. It's almost normal. It's still shifted a little to the left. I didn't draw it very well, but it looks a little bit like this. And the point I want to make is this as follows. Uh, we, we then uh, divide this, uh, this distribution, I guess, uh, into a number of different little uh, phases. For example, we might draw a line here, roughly. Let's, say, let's just say it's 200 microns. Okay? And you can see right away that the majority of the number of droplets are down here, or below 200 microns. But on the other hand, uh, it, they represent a fairly small proportion of the total volume, which is the dashed line. Okay, so they represent the driftable fines, and they're the ones that evaporate quickly, they're lost when, when it's windy and so on. Uh, and uh, we can sort of calculate uh, what proportion of the spray cloud is drift prone, just by looking at that, uh, that side of it. Uh, it's, it's really this, this section right here that we would consider to be drift prone. Uh, this, the next section is also very interesting. For example, we might arbitrarily draw another line here. Let's say this one is at about 600 microns. And uh, look at the, the efficacious portion of the, of the, the spray. So here we're saying it's, it's certainly efficacious, but it might be lost. And here we're saying, well, it's probably going to hit, hit the target, and it'll probably do some, something of value there. That's the, the proportion of the volume that probably will uh, carry your, your active ingredient to, uh, to its final resting place, the site of action. On the other hand, anything bigger than that, bigger than 600 microns is an arbitrary number, uh, down here probably is not going to do much. First of all, as you can see, there's not many droplets there. And second of all, they're so big that they'll probably bounce off and they might not contribute much to coverage and so forth. So we're quite cautious about that. Um, so that's kind of the information we get from lasers. I'm going to just keep drawing laser charts here. Um, because that's what I do. And uh, the, the next thing we do with these, uh, this piece of information is we draw a cumulative volume distribution. And what I mean by that is we just keep adding you know, the, the little sections to each other and express them as a percent of the whole. Of the whole. And really all it, it looks like is it, the distribution starts to look like this. Where this point here is 
Here we still have the volume, uh, the, sorry, the diameter of the droplets. And uh, now we can divide this distribution into so-called percentiles. And the 50th percentile is here. And this is the diameter below which is half the volume and above which is the other half. This is also known as the volume median diameter or the VMD, but we call it the DD.5. So it's DV0.5 or VMD. It's the number that's often tossed around. Like for example, people will say, I should be spraying with about a 300 micron drop is what, we'll, what they'll say. What they mean is I should be using a spray that has a volume median diameter or DV0.5 of about 300. In other words, it's a polydispersed spray uh, that has half the volume below that diameter and half above. It may only actually have a 300 micron drop in it, that's entirely possible. Um, we also want to look at some other percentiles. For example, there's the percentile down here, which is the DV.1. And you might have guessed that that's the 10th percentile. And then we have the 90th percentile up here and, uh, and so on. So DV0.9. So those represent you know, the, the diameters above and below, which are these various proportions of the spray. I'm only drawing this because it's important for the next and last step in the trumpet size classification. And that is, well, how do you determine whether the spray we've just measured actually is a coarser or a fine spray? How do we do that exactly? Um, there's no magic numbers here because all of these numbers that we measure depend on the kind of instrument that we use. And there's different lasers out there, different ways of doing it, and each and every one of them gives a slightly different answer. So what we've done is the following. Uh, the international community in spraying has devised a system where we take reference nozzles. So these are physical nozzles like this one here, and uh, they are manufactured specifically for the purpose of measuring spray quality and they're passed around from lab to lab. They're the same, there's about 10 sets or so, or 20 sets internationally, not that many. And we share them with each other. And what we'll do is when we have to measure spray quality, we'll spray them in a lab and we'll measure these DV.1, DV.5, and DV.9 parameters I just talked about. Uh, here's the 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 0 0.9. And then we end up with little data points for these reference nozzles. Okay, and uh, they, they look different. Uh, And, uh, well, let's just go here. Oh, that's way too high. That's better. Okay. And uh, we just sort of set, draw these lines together. Looks about like that. So these lines now represent border categories. So, for example, this first one might be the fine, uh, very fine line. And this one here might be the fine medium line. This one might be the medium coarse and this one could be the coarse, very coarse and so on. Now what we do is we take the nozzle of interest. Let's say we've got an air bubble jet. Let's say we've got a hyperguardian air and we want to know, well, is it fine, medium coarse, what is it? We'll spray it, same day, same conditions and we'll find something like this. We'll say, aha, it's, uh, it's, it's got a data point here and here, and you know, it might actually even have, well, let's say it has a data point here or, or there. Um, see, I should have practiced this. I think we'll go up with the buff one. And uh, let's just draw the, combine these points here. I don't want to cross a category. What we find out now is that at the DB.1, uh, this nozzle uh, is between uh, the coarse and uh, the medium uh, border, I believe, the coarse, very coarse, and medium coarse border. So, and, and so it, and it is as well here, and it's above that border here. So up here, it would be classified as very coarse, but here it would be classified as coarse and coarse. And the standard says to actually, unfortunately, ignore this part here, go, go with this area here, and therefore we classify this, category, uh, this nozzle as coarse. And that's how this works. So we basically run this nozzle at different pressures and different flow rates and maybe there's different nozzles that we use and we end up with um, um, this, this categorization. The manufacturers then uh, publish the information in their catalogs. I've just pulled one out here and we'll show you a close-up of it on the video. But when you, when you pull up a catalog, you can find uh, for any given flow rate and pressure of a nozzle, you'll find sort of a, a color-coded uh, spray quality classification. 
The industry uses the following terms. Um, we go with, I think you've already seen me use some of these, but I'll list them out just for sake of completeness. Um, we start off with very fine, uh, we go to fine, we go to medium, coarse, uh, very coarse, extremely coarse, and ultra coarse. And these are all color coded according to drift risk. So, for example, uh, some of these categories will be red and orange. Here we have yellow, and then it goes blue, green, and white, and black. Uh, and then it basically just uh, gives you sort of a, a, you know, it's a hot and cold thing with regards to drift risk. Um, in agriculture, we're basically saying no to very fine and fine for general arable. Uh, spraying that we do with a high clearance sprayer, for example, the most common kind of spraying in Western Canada. Why? Uh, these these sprays are too fine. It's not necessary to be that fine. There's no efficacy advantage to being that fine. Uh, the main problem with being that fine is drift, evaporation, and general losses. So we avoid those kinds of sprays. We also are uh, pretty nervous about these kinds of sprays. I don't want to cross them out entirely because they do sometimes work for some things, depends on your water volume, but there's going to be relatively few droplets available for this kind of a spray. The bread and butter of agriculture is right here. We're talking about medium, coarse, and very coarse sprays, and these are the ones that we should be focusing on. We should be choosing nozzles that produce these kinds of spray cold. It's the pressures which we expect to use. And you know, you've heard me say in, in past episodes of this that uh, the air induction tip or a low drift tip, maybe from Williger, like the, the SR or MR, should be used at you know, intermediate uh, pressure, the pressures in the middle of their pressure range. And I've, I've commented that those kinds of pressures are good because they give you travel speed range. In other words, room to move if you have to slow down in rate control or lower the pressure and vice versa. Well, there's another reason for doing, using them at those pressures. Most of the air induction tips at the intermediate pressures of 60 to 70 to 80 psi produce a coarse and sometimes a medium spray quality. Okay, right here. This is uh, a very good spray quality that is a good starting point for us in agriculture. Most herbicides work well at that spray quality. Uh, most insecticides and fungicides also work at that spray quality. With the insecticides and fungicides, we've traditionally gone to finer sprays, so you may want to choose a different nozzle, or you can simply increase the pressure of your nozzle because the pressure will make that spray finer and probably will make it fine enough for that purpose. On the other hand, if you have drift concerns, you're doing the outside rounds, you may want to go to a lower pressure that will produce a, a coarser spray quality. And just being careful not to go so low that you, you exceed the courses you want and start going into these extremely coarse categories where coverage then becomes challenging. So, uh, spray quality then is a, is, a, is a way of kind of unifying a lot of different parameters that are related to the, I guess, the spectrum of, a sp of droplets in a spray. Uh, it puts it, you know, in, in a very generic way, uh, into a, in a fairly broad category. Not all coarse sprays are the same droplet size as you can probably get imagined. But it tells us, uh, allows us to compare different droplet sizes from different manufacturers and under different uses. So it gives us a really good opportunity to, uh, to choose the right spray regardless of the manufacturer. So if you want to go to a Hypro Guardian Air and, shoot, and use it at 60 PSI, you'll probably get a coarse to medium spray, but you could also go to a Greenleaf Air Mix that teach an AIXR or, or an Air Bubble Jet and get very similar kinds of spray qualities at similar kinds of pressures. And the manufacturer has been good enough to provide that information. They do all the testing according to an international standard and they provide that for us. Where do you get the information? Well, I've shown you uh, sort of the manufacturer's catalogs like this that are useful for that. Uh, all the manufacturers have websites where they additionally provide that online. Uh, and uh, they also provide apps now. Most of the major manufacturers have apps. Um, T-Jet has, Pent, uh, Pentair, Hypro has, uh, Greenleaf has a new one, Williger has one, and so on. And uh, as you already know, the SSCA, uh, the Saskatchewan Soil Conservation Association, also has developed an app that unifies all of them together. Basically, every single nozzle for which spray quality is known in North America is featured in this app. If you know what nozzle you've got, uh, then you'll know the spray quality that the manufacturer says that that nozzle produces. So, those are the tools uh, that are available. Uh, and uh, happy spraying. It's been spraying for Tom. Thanks. Thank you.